Well, the Syrian crisis today is probably the greatest humanitarian disaster, catastrophe in, in the world. There have been uh, more than two and a half million people displaced in Syria. There are uh, close to half a million people uh, re taking refuge in neighboring countries. There are maybe close to 40,000 dead. So it's a, it's a huge crisis that has been going on now for more than a year and a half. The Security Council is deeply, deeply divided. The main reason for the division is that there is no understanding between Russia, China and the Western powers on the way forward. All the permanent members of the Security Council have a common interest in not seeing an, an extreme Islamist regime in Syria. And the more that war continues, the, the more likely it gets that there will be such a regime. But the division of the Security Council is one key reason for the continuation of the crisis. It's a strategic battle, I would say, between Iran and the Gulf countries. Iran, Saudi Arabia, uh, pitted against Saudi Arabia and Qatar. And uh, there is no appetite on any side uh, for a compromise. Uh, it has to be, for Iran, it has to be a total victory. That is, they want to show that Assad can weather the storm. And I think for the uh, Saudis and the Qataris also, they want the exact opposite. Uh, they want complete defeat. And uh, that is probably not possible. And that is not even advisable because uh, whatever one thinks of the Assad regime, it, it has the support of some part of the population, uh, of a significant part of the population. Uh, there are um, more than 100,000 refugees in Syria. Uh, there are also refugees in Jordan. Uh, the greatest threat is to Lebanon, which after the civil war uh, that really tore apart the country has a kind of fragile balance between the various communities of Lebanon. Uh, if Lebanon becomes a safe haven for one group or the other, uh, then uh, Lebanon will not be able to maintain the peace it has had since uh, the end of its own uh, civil war. Assad has been uh, uh, somewhat unpredictable, sending signals of opening and then hardening. Uh, there are a lot of theories on why that happens, that he is under the influence of various uh, people and so that uh, he, he doesn't have a really strategic uh, direction. Uh, I, I think that is, there is probably some truth uh, there and that there are people in Syria who think he was too soft at the beginning of the uprising and that now he has to reassert his authority and create fear and terror to ensure the continuation of his, uh, of his power. While the opposition does not have the capacity to really take over Syria, the government does not have the capacity to crush the opposition. It has the capacity to crush the opposition in one particular place, one place at a time, but it cannot do it throughout the country at once. And so uh, there is a stalemate, but there's not an awareness of that stalemate. Each side still believes it can win.